Hello folks. In this video we'll introduce some of the remarkable people who settled and developed Chase County after the Civil War. If gravestones could talk, we could learn some fascinating things about the county's history. Our approach involves visiting local cemeteries and locating grave markers. Then we learned about the deceased from materials available in the Chase County Historical Museum. We found many intriguing life stories. What follows is a sampling. I regret that we can't revisit the lives of everyone who settled in this area. A recent investigation for the Chase County Historical Society found over 30 cemeteries in the county. Some are not maintained and are difficult to locate on private lands. Steve Dawson is one of the amigos who investigated the cemeteries. We took on a project for the Chase County Historical Society. Uh, it was a challenge to find and document the locations of all of the cemeteries in Chase County. Uh, we ended up finding at least 31. The, some are better known, such as the Prairie Grove Cemetery that's the outline behind us, uh, and some that are not so known. They're small family cemeteries. Let's begin our cemetery tour with Prairie Grove Cemetery, a mile west of Cottonwood Falls. It's the largest cemetery in Chase County with some 2,500 tombstones. Among the permanent residents is the colorful and controversial Sam Wood. A Quaker from central Ohio, Sam came to Kansas in 1857 to promote the abolition of slavery. He was a lawyer, a real estate promoter, a member of the state legislature, and a newspaper publisher. Sam insisted on naming this county for Salmon P. Chase, the Ohio governor and senator. Chase later on served in President Lincoln's cabinet and was Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. Chase, like Wood, was an anti-slavery abolitionist. After the Civil War, Wood was involved in several unsuccessful development schemes in western Kansas. Sam founded a town named Woodsdale in Stevens County, which he wanted to become the county seat. He was soon at the center of a bloody county seat war between residents of Hugoton and Woodsdale. In 1891, he was assassinated in Hugoton. His remains were returned to Chase County for burial. Sam Wood left a controversial legacy. His supporters trumpeted his support for women's suffrage and his opposition to slavery. His critics denounced his schemes for self-promotion and enrichment. Also in Prairie Grove is one of Sam's cousins, Sidney Breeds. Brees served as the first postmaster of Cottonwood Falls and held many county offices, including county commissioner. He had served with Sam Wood's unit in the Civil War and was wounded three times. One newspaper said Brees had strong attachments to his friends and he was a good hater of his enemies. Two prominent ranchers also sleep in Prairie Grove. Jacob Blackshear, the founder of the Clover Cliffs Ranch, came to Chase County in 1860 and settled west of Elmdale. He raised Galloway cattle and produced alfalfa on his 5,000-acre ranch. From passing trains on the Santa Fe Railroad, many travelers admired his picturesque farm. According to legend, Blackshear even hosted the bandit Jesse James and his gang at Clover Cliff. Sadly, Clover Cliff, like many farms of that era, had a contaminated water problem. As a result, 
Jacob Blackshear died prematurely of typhoid, as did several other members of his family. Stephen Jones developed the 7,000-acre Spring Hill Ranch, now on the Tall Grass Prairie National Preserve. He was a Tennessee-born rancher who moved to Texas before the Civil War. After the conflict, he came to Colorado and Kansas to breed and raise cattle. Locals said that when Jones arrived in Chase County, he had money sticking out of every pocket. He was a heavy stockholder and president of the Strong City National Bank. His ranch on Fox Creek, north of Strong City, had over 45 miles of stone fences. It had a magnificent home and barn built of local limestone by stonemason David Redeker. It was done in the French Second Empire style. Jones stocked the ranch with Hereford and shorthorn cattle. Another prominent resident of Prairie Grove is Dr. William H. Carter, an Ohio physician who came to Kansas in about 1880. He bought the Sam Wood residence east of Cottonwood Falls. The Chase County Historical Society currently occupies Carter's building at Broadway and Friends Streets. It was completed in 1888. During the Civil War, Carter, a Marine, fought in many key battles along the Potomac, including First Bull Run. He saw the maritime battle between two ironclads, the Union Monitor and the Confederate Merrimack in March 1862. His father, David Kellogg Carter, the Chief Justice of the District of Columbia Supreme Court was a close friend of President Abraham Lincoln. As chairman of the Ohio delegation to the 1860 Republican Convention, David Carter cast the deciding votes to nominate Lincoln. After President Lincoln's assassination, as he lay mortally wounded in a home across from the Ford Theater, Judge Carter opened an investigation of the crime with Secretary of War Stanton in an adjacent room. Judge Carter was a familiar figure in Chase County, visiting his son in the summers. He became a large landowner here. In 1883, along with rancher Stephen Jones and quarryman Barney Lantry, he started the Strong City National Bank. Now we turn to several ladies who rest in Prairie Grove. One was Minnie Morgan, the wife of William Morgan, the publisher of the Chase County Leader. Minnie had the distinction of being elected mayor of Cottonwood Falls in 1888, along with four other women council members and a female police judge. This election occurred before women could vote in state and federal elections. As the story goes, local men nominated Minnie and her colleagues as a joke, but the women organized and won the election. Two other members of the all-female city council are buried in Prairie Grove. They are Sadie Park Grisham and Elizabeth Porter. Grisham was a teacher and the wife of a prominent lawyer. She would later lead the suffrage movement in Kansas. Elizabeth Porter, another well-regarded teacher, was the sister of Oliver Cromwell Dick Pratt. He was a legendary frontier figure called the Robin Hood of the Flint Hills. Dick Pratt and a band of outlaws are said to have stolen back Indian horses and cattle. Dick Pratt lies next to his sister in Prairie Grove. For a year in 1889, Minnie Morgan and her all-female council ruled Cottonwood Falls with what newspapers called petticoat justice. The ladies were prohibitionists. One of their initiatives was to close down the saloons. Here they had the assistance of police judge Mary Groundwater. 
Judge Groundwater doubled the fines. One drunk, expecting a routine fine of $8.35, found himself with a bill five times that amount, about $1,225 in today's currency. Judge Groundwater is buried in the Elmdale Cemetery. This leads us to the mystery of Prairie Grove. What happened to two notable inhabitants not listed in cemetery records? The story begins with the murder of a young assistant postmaster, Carl Kuehl, in May of 1894. The killer was George Rose, a printer from New York who shot Kuehl in the back. Rose was apparently upset when Kuehl was appointed to a job he coveted. After Rose was arrested and locked in the county jail in the courthouse, a masked mob assembled, pushed aside the sheriff, and seized him. They marched Rose to a railroad bridge over the Cottonwood River. The mob lynched him, left his body dangling on the bridge. Newspapers headlined, Lynch Law in Kansas. Judge Lynch visits Cottonwood Falls. The Chase County coroner investigated and his jury concluded, death by hanging by parties unknown. Rose's body was taken by the county and placed in an unmarked grave in the cemetery. Kuehl? The well-liked 19-year-old son of a former mayor had a large funeral with 145 vehicles in the procession to Prairie Grove Cemetery. But the mystery remains. Carl Kuehl's parents are buried there, but the records don't show where Carl's grave is located, nor do they show roses. There are many other well-known people buried in Prairie Grove. They include one former U.S. congressman who served during the World War I period. His name was Dudley Doolittle. Whether his unusual name helped or hindered his political career, I'm uncertain, but he was well regarded in Chase County as a banker and a businessman. Now let us turn to some of the notable residents of other county cemeteries. In eastern Chase County, we find Hillside Cemetery near Toledo. One of the largest funerals in the county occurred in 1905 for Dr. Alonzo M. Conaway. Conaway, an Ohio doctor, thrice wounded in the Civil War, came to Chase County in 1870 and located on Buckeye Creek, where he farmed and served patients. He was the county coroner who investigated the hanging of George Rose in 1894. Conaway practiced eclectic or alternative medicine. During the Civil War, he had observed thousands of soldiers becoming addicted to alcohol and opioids, such as opium and morphine. At the end of the war, there was an estimated 400,000 morphine patients among former soldiers. Conaway became an enthusiastic backer of the Keeley Double Gold Chloride treatment boosted by an Illinois physician named Lesler Keeley. Conaway promoted the Keeley treatment with advertising in Chase County papers. Patients could obtain bottles of the Keeley medication by mail and take a teaspoonful every two hours. The Keeley cure, widely approved in the 19th century for treating alcohol and drug addiction, fell out of favor in the 20th century. It's my understanding that modern medicine considers the Keeley cure quackery. Also in Toledo is the old Quaker Cemetery, which holds the remains of some of the 19th century families who settled eastern Chase County. 
Some of them, such as John Marriott, were attracted to the area in the 1870s to work on the railroads and in the quarries, and then stayed to farm and raise families. In the strong township cemetery, one can find the graves of stone contractor John Emsley and town marshal G.J. Frank Harden. Tom Thompson of the Chase County Historical Society, one of the amigos who investigated county cemeteries, knows their stories. The Strong City Cemetery Association was formed in 1887 uh, on land donated by John Emsley, who was considered the father of Strong City. Uh, in the 1930s, the, the Cemetery Association was taken over by the Strong Township and has since been known as the Strong Township Cemetery. One of the more infamous people buried in the cemetery is Frank Harden. He was the town marshal in Strong City in the 1880s. Uh, he toured with circuses. He was considered one of the tallest men in, in the world at the time. I'm not sure how accurate that was, but he was well over seven foot tall, and he had a special uniform he'd wear that he would greet passengers coming into the depot, railroad depot, and uh, kind of direct them towards the different hotels and restaurants in town. Uh, he was also known to uh, escort the kids in town down to the river so they could go swimming and he'd be there in case someone got in trouble. In nearby St. Anthony's Catholic Cemetery are the remains of the prominent Redeker family. They include David who constructed the Spring Hill Ranch and the Carter Building. He and his brothers came to Chase County after the Civil War to work on the courthouse. They remained to develop the rich limestone quarries. The Elmdale Cemetery was founded by veterans of the Grand Army of the Republic, U.S. Grant Post in Elmdale. In 1898, members erected an impressive 11-foot cut stone memorial to those who defended the Union during the Civil War. Cutler's classic History of Kansas notes that 27% of Chase County's voting population enlisted in the Union military in 1861. It was a figure, said Cutler, that probably no county in the United States of America could match. Here there were 70 Army volunteers out of a body of 262 voters. In the Clement Cemetery, one finds members of the Shaft family who came to the area in 1857. A gravestone honors Jane Shaft, the matriarch of the family. She lost her husband soon after arriving in the area when he was swept away in a flood while trying to cross Diamond Creek. She raised nine children in the county. The Chase County leader praised her as a truly noble woman and a ministering angel to the sick and unfortunate. A number of prominent residents are buried in the Cedar Point Cemetery. The largest memorial is for Francis Bernard and his wife. They migrated from France and established the French settlement between Cedar Point and Florence. Bernard was a prominent rancher and farmer and a large stakeholder in the Chase County National Bank. Many of the other French settlers are buried in Florence, including members of the Bichette family associated with the Bichette one-room school along Route 50. Another is Frank Laloge, the Crimean War veteran who became an Indian trader and teamster. He lived a colorful life in the Cedar Point area. For many years, he organized an annual French picnic on Bastille Day. The founding of Cedar Point is associated with Orlo H. Drinkwater, who arrived in 1857. He led a productive life as a judge, public official, farmer, and businessman. He built the Cedar Point Mill, in 1912, Judge Drinkwater died under unusual circumstances. He was struck by a child on a bicycle. Falling, he fractured his skull 
and never recovered. The Cedar Point Cemetery also contains headstones for the family of Ephraim Pinkston. He was a prominent early settler who located a claim along the Cottonwood River in 1857 and managed a 700-acre farm. His family life was filled with tragedy as his wife and three of his four children died prematurely. Another prominent resident of the Cedar Point area was Captain Peter D. Montgomery. Crippled by cannon fire in the Civil War, Montgomery came to Chase County in 1873. Active in local politics and respected for his knowledge of the law, Montgomery experienced many personal tragedies. Five of his seven children died prematurely. One kicked in the head by a horse, another struck by lightning, and several felled by disease. The Montgomery Family Cemetery is located several miles north of Cedar Point near the Marion County line. During the war he was wounded and was ill of health and so his sons would try to do the farming. One son, while coming across the pasture during a storm, was struck and killed by lightning. Another one was like 11 years old, had got the horses, had plowed the fields, was getting them ready to plant, and was coming back and was unharnessing the horses when one of the horses kicked him and killed him. Petey Montgomery, when he passed away, uh, at that point he had lived I believe it was in Lawrence, and when he passed away, they brought his body to Cedar Point, and it was a big ordeal. A lot of dignitaries because of his history. So they went out and they buried him in the family plot next to his two sons and his first wife. At the remote Homestead Cemetery, nine miles south of Clements, one can find the graves of two amazing circus performers. Tattooist Gus Wagner and his wife Maud Stevens. Gus had more than 800 tattoos on his body and was the most tattooed man in the world in the early 20th century. Maud, a native of Lyon County, was also a circus performer and the first known female tattoo artist. Twelve miles to the east, near Route 177, is the Matfield Green Cemetery. Here one can find a number of prominent families, including the Mercers and Roglers. David Washington Mercer arrived from England before the Civil War and named the community for a town in England. There are also several generations of Roglers buried here. They came from Germany and farmed the rich bottom land along the South Branch. Their legacy is, of course, Pioneer Bluffs. Charles Rogler was the first to come and homestead along the South Fork. When he passed away in 1888, obituaries remembered him as a respected citizen and Civil War veteran who had served as county commissioner and as a director of the Chase County National Bank. One of his close friends was Captain Henry Brandley, a native of Switzerland. Brandley came to the area in late 1859 and settled near the South Fork. After a military service in the Civil War, he returned to farming and ranching. According to the Chase County leader, he amassed a large fortune. Brandley was active in Republican politics serving in both houses of the state legislature. He is buried in a private cemetery east of the Kansas Turnpike near Matfield Green. To the north along Route 177, we find the Bazaar Cemetery, which contains the gravestones for many prominent residents of the county. Among them, Elizabeth Norton, the Irish widow who brought her five sons to Chase County's frontier in 1859. She chose to take her chances raising a family with the Indians rather than the border ruffians along the Missouri border. One son, William, would become Chase County Sheriff, 
and another, Patrick or PJ, would become a prominent quarryman and paymaster for Barney Lantry's large construction firm. One of the best maintained family cemeteries is the Griffith Cemetery on Cedar Creek. There are members of the Sauble family, including the founder David Sauble, who came to Chase County from Baltimore in 1859. He settled on Cedar Creek to farm and ranch. He accumulated some 3,000 acres and was one of the wealthiest ranchers in the county. David was known to fear nothing but lightning. He was always timid in an electric storm. Ironically, he was struck down by lightning while traveling with a friend near Medicine Lodge. In other private cemeteries, we find the remains of pioneer families. Their gravestones remind us of how challenging life was on the frontier, to raise children before modern medicine and good roads. One of the things that we kind of are really hit with when we were doing the research at the cemeteries was all the youth and the younger kids that had passed away from lightning, being kicked, accidents, but a lot of it was due to the viruses and the smallpox, the diphtheria, everything. If you go through these cemeteries, you're really shocked at the ages of them. As Steve Dawson notes, diseases like typhoid and diphtheria, farm accidents and lightning strikes were among the principal causes of death to farm families. What happened to the small family cemeteries? Some have disappeared as farms were sold and headstones moved to public cemeteries. Others have vanished without proper care. Many of the smaller cemeteries uh, were started by very prominent citizens. I Cemetery near Clements, you go to the Pinkston Cemetery, is another one up by Cedar Point. The Drinkwaters was the same way. Uh, one of them is the Shaft Cemetery at Clements. Some of the other cemeteries that we visited, you know, we had to do research one was High Prairie out by Matfield Green. And uh, other cemeteries such as the Lawless Cemetery west of Strong City, overgrown with grass. And we found a lot of the headstones that were underneath the grass layer. Still got a lot more to do, but uh, we were really surprised we had found almost all of the cemeteries that are in Chase County. To learn more about the lives of early Chase County residents, we recommend a visit to the Chase County Historical Museum and Library. Here, Don Sisson, the curator, will welcome you. Welcome to Chase County. We are the Chase County Historical Society and Museum. We are located in Cottonwood Falls, Kansas. We offer lots of records here on genealogy. There are two file cabinets full of obituaries that talk about the people that are buried in our local cemeteries. We also offer file cabinets of history on the cemeteries. We have listing of people and the cemeteries they're buried in. We recently have a volunteer who is working on taking all of those obituaries and trying to put them onto our computer into an Excel program. So if you're looking for people that are buried in our local county, please come and visit us.